human right. Healthcare is a human right. Healthcare is a human right. Let's open for care. Let's open for care. Let's open for care. Let's open for care. Because if you are politically powerful, you keep your hospitals open. If you need care, if you are poor, if you are disabled, if you are on Medicaid, then your hospitals close. If you are in central Brooklyn, if you are in a poor section of Queens or the Bronx, 
or the west side of Manhattan, your hospitals get targeted for closure. Why? Why is it that certain hospitals just seem to be the ones that have trouble making money? Because we have a broken reimbursement system. If you are insured by Medicare or Medicaid, your hospital has trouble making enough money to stay in business. So you close. If your hospital is located in a place where lots of wealthy people are, your hospital gets to stay open. So don't let them tell you there's too many hospital beds and that's why we have to close Litch and that's why we have to close St. Vincent's and that's why we have to close Interface and that's why we have to close Downstate. No. no. Okay, there are hospitals upon hospitals upon hospitals. It is a maldistribution of hospitals and hospital beds, just as there is a maldistribution of everything else in our broken economic system in the United States. Now we have a solution, one part of the solution, single payer health care, Medicare for all, paid for by progressive taxations, everybody in, nobody out. There is a national bill for single payer, H.R. 676, and there is a New York State bill for single payer, which we support. Physicians for a National Health Program, I believe NICE does well, supports the state bill in New York State Legislature. We're close to having a majority in the lower house of the state legislature. We urge everyone for your state senators and your state legislatures to support the New York State single payer bill. We ask you support, tell the senators and congressmen to support H.R. 676. We ask them to scrap the Burger Commission, to start over with thinking about a proper distribution, health care, hospital beds, outpatient facilities should be located on the basis of need not Wall Street and condo greed. Yeah. Uh, we're just gonna sing a little song. I uh, get get kind of warmed up in this, uh, you know, chilly, almost spring day. Uh, if everyone could just start by going like, ah, if you're dead. Ah! All right, it's just part of the song. Uh, you'll see. Uh, it goes like this. Sing with me now. We're in debt. You sing that. We're, We're in, in debt. debt. You bet. You, you bet. bet. But we're not dead. You. But but we're, we're not dead. dead. Not dead yet. Yeah. Not dead yet. Well, I'm in debt and you're in debt and everyone we know is in debt. Everyone we know. Thanks for coming out. This is our final like action basically for the week. We've been putting together a series of actions around medical debts and also the broken healthcare system. And there have been other people doing actions around the country as well. 
Now I need a list so I can remember all these places. There's Los Angeles, there's Maryland, Albany, Louisiana, and there are upcoming actions also in Queens and Vermont. So cheer here. Come Woo! Great, great. All right, for this action, we've been collaborating with a lot of people as well. We've been collaborating with Occupy Town Square and Healthcare for the 99%. So yeah, give it up. All right, great. So we're Strike Debt. We came out of Occupy Wall Street. And uh, basically, we formed last summer a part of a process where we realized that uh, Debt is seriously affecting all of us, everyone we know, your family, everyone, right? Who has debt here? That's my name. All of us. So we're trying to figure a way out of this mess. Basically, we want to form a coalition of debtors and start a debt resistance movement. Now here, here to that, right? All right. So. Basically, since then, we've been uh, devising a series of strategies to attack the capitalist system, the capitalist debt system. And one of those strategies is the Rolling Jubilee. Have you heard of the Rolling Jubilee? <laughs> All right, so what has the Rolling Jubilee done? Well, we have purchased and abolished over $1 million of medical debt. That's right. And there's gonna be more purchasing and abolishing in the future. So keep your eyes and ears open. Same bat time, same bat channel. All right? So that's our announcement. It was uh, basically people in Kentucky and in, in Indiana chosen at random over a thousand, a thousand people. So in addition to relieving our fellow debtors from the financial burden, we also want to make a public intervention to inspire people in their hearts and in their minds at the places where they are. So this, this isn't just something that we can do, this is something that all of us can do. So you need to talk to your family, talk to your friends, let them know that we have power, that we can do things, we can help each other, it's about mutual aid. And here you go, come on now. All right, so that's, that's my half. <laughs> Yeah. 
1%. And I don't know if most of you know this, I didn't, but actually, and I'm sure our speakers will tell us more, since 2006, 10 hospitals have been closed in New York City. We need those hospitals. Yeah. And more closings are on the way if we don't do something about it. And the Nurses Association has been amazing in fighting the ledge closing, but they need our support. Uh, and just one closing word, which is that, you know, in Strike Debt, um, we believe in, you know, political autonomy and direct democracy, direct action, and a general culture of um, solidarity and anti-oppression. So we'll hear from different, and we also, we believe in a variety of, you know, tactics and strategies to attack the ills of our capitalist system. So we'll hear from different groups, you know, who are coming um, from different angles. So some of our folks have been um, working on a campaign to promote the single payer bill. And then uh, other have been fighting um, the hospital closing. So uh, with that in mind, uh, I'm gonna give the floor to Ali from NHP. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm here from Physicians for our National Health Program. Should we do mic check? Yeah. yeah. Okay. My name is Oliver Fine. His name is Oliver Fine. And I'm here from Physicians for our National Health Program. And who's here for Physicians for a National Health Program? Why do people have medical debt? Why do people have medical debt? Well, they get sick enough. Well, well they, they get, get sick, sick enough that they end up in the hospital. That they, they end up in the hospital and they can't pay the bills that they get. And, and they, they can't pay, pay the bills that they get. get. Why can't they pay their bills? Why, Why can't they pay their bills? Well, some of them are people who have no health insurance. Well, some of them are people who have no health insurance. But others have health insurance. But others have health insurance. It is calculated now that more than 80 million people it's calculated that more than 80 million people have health insurance that is not adequate. Have health insurance that is not adequate. And they are underinsured. And they are underinsured. Because, because there are high deductibles. There are high deductibles. That means money they have to pay before the insurance goes into effect. That means money they have to pay before the insurance goes into effect. Or they have high co-payments. Or they have high co-payments. And that's money they have to pay on a bill that they get. It can be 10 or 20 or 30%. And that's, and that's what they, they, they have to pay on a bill that is just 10, 20, or 30 percent. How do we how do we change that? How do we change that? We feel in physicians for a national health program. We feel in physicians for a national health program that we need a single payer national health insurance. That we, we need a single payer national, national health insurance. insurance. That would be an improved, that, that would be an improved, improved Medicare for all. Medicare for all. As you heard before, nobody out, everybody in. As, As you heard before, before nobody, nobody out, everybody, everybody in. in. There would then be no private health insurance, essentially. There would there be no, no private, private health insurance, insurance, essentially. But everybody would have health insurance. But everybody would have health insurance. It would not depend on whether you had a job or not. It would, it would not depend on whether you have a job or not. And it would be paid for, frankly, through our taxes. And, and it would be paid for, frankly, through our taxes. We calculate that that would be 
400 billion dollars less. We calculate that would be 400 billion dollars less than we presently pay for health care. Than we presently pay for health care because the administrative cost. Because, because the administrative cost, cost of Medicare is 3%, of uh, Medicare is 3%, yeah, yeah. whereas private health insurance, yeah. whereas the private health insurance, insurance has an administrative cost, has an administrative cost of 20 or 30%. Of 20 or 30%. So we could, in fact, insure everybody. So we could, so we could in fact, insure everybody without actually increasing the cost of the healthcare system. Without, without actually, actually increasing, increasing the cost of the healthcare system. And as you heard, we have a bill in Congress. And as, and as you heard, we have a bill in Congress. H.R. 676. H.R. 676. And a bill in the state, and a bill in the state called Health New York Health, called New York Health, which has now close to 63 co-sponsors in the assembly, which has close to 63 co-sponsors in the assembly, and 10 in the New York State Senate, and 10 in the New York State Senate. If we had New York Health, if, if we had New York Health, we would be able to keep Lich open. We would be able to keep Lich open. And I think we could stop the closing of other hospitals. And I think we could stop the closing of other hospitals. So I think we should say Medicare for all. So I think we should say Medicare for all. 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 Thank you very much. Mic check. Mic check. Mic check. I have worked for 21 years at Long Island College Hospital. I have worked for 21 years at Long Island College Hospital. And I am a part of the neuroscience team. And I am part of the neuroscience team. Which is the stroke unit. Which is the stroke unit. At Long Island College Hospital. At Long Island College Hospital. We are. We are. The first and number one. The first and number one. Certified comprehensive stroke centers in Brooklyn. Certified comprehensive stroke center in Brooklyn. Long Island College Hospital have been every day open and save lives in for stroke <laughs> symptoms. Our hospital. Long Island Hospital is open for care. Yeah, I've been saving lives every day. And the saving lives every day. We are asking. We are asking. Governor Cuomo. Governor Cuomo. Commissioner Shaw. Commissioner Shaw. To have understanding, to have, to have understanding, and need to keep Long Island College Hospital open, and need to keep Long Island College Hospital open, so we can professionals and clinicians at Long Island College Hospital to continue. So we, so we, so we as professionals at Long Island College Hospital, can continue to provide. Quality care to provide quality care for the surrounding communities in need. For the surrounding communities in need and save lives. And save lives. That we all that we are all are proud to do are proud to do every day of our duty. Every day of our duty. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. So more guidelines. Number one. Number one, stay together, stay, stay together, together, and keep moving, and keep moving. Number two, number two, do not instigate, do not instigate physical conflict, physical conflict with cops or pedestrians, with cops or pedestrians. Pacers in the front, pacers in the front, middle, 
middle, and back, and, and back. back are empowered to direct the march. Are empowered, empowered to, to direct, direct the, the march. march. That was point three. That, that was point, point three. three. Point four. Point, point four. four. We use basic hand signals. We, we use basic, basic hand, hand signals. signals. Left. Left. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Turn around. Turn around. And mic check. Mic, mic check. check. Number five. Number, Number five. five. And the last point. And the, and last, the last point. point. Respect a diversity of tactics. Respect, Respect a diversity, diversity of, of tactics. tactics. But be aware. But, but be aware. Of how your actions affect the group. Of how your actions affect the group. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Drummers here. I, I think, think we have some drummers, drummers here. here. Do we have drummers? Do we, we have, have drummers? drummers. Yay! Yay! We may also have. We, we may also have some singers. Some, some singers. singers. Is there a choir here? Is there, there a choir here? here? Okay, we have drummers. Okay, we have drummers. <laughs> As we leave, we will march around the fountain. As, As we, we leave, leave, we will march around the fountain one time, one, one time. time, and then head out, and, and then, then head out. out. As we do that, as, as we, we do, do that, that, there are flyers here for outreach. There are flyers here for outreach. You can take some. You, you can, can take some. some. These are great for the community. These, These are great, great for the community. community. When they run up and say, when, when they, they run, run up and say, hey, what's this all about? Hey, what's this all about? You can say BAM! You, you can, can say BAM! bam. <laughs> we also have... We, we also have... Signs! Signs! If you want some! If, if you, you want, want some, some! They're right here! They're, they're right, right here. here! Just grab them as we walk out! Just, Just grab, grab them, them as, as we walk out! out.